Song of Myself, Sections 30 through 52, by Walt Whitman. All truths wait in all things. They neither hasten their own delivery nor resist it. They do not need the obstetric forceps of the surgeon. The insignificant is as big to me as any. What is less or more than a touch? Logic and sermons never convince. The damp of the night drives deeper into my soul. Only what proves itself to every man and woman is so. Only what nobody denies is so. A minute and a drop of me settle my brain. I believe the soggy clods shall become lovers and lamps. And a compend of compends is the meat of a man or woman. And a summit and flower there is, the feeling they have for each other. And they are to branch boundlessly out of that lesson until it becomes omnific. And until one and all shall delight us, and we them. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars. And the pismire is equally perfect. And a grain of sand, and the egg of the wren. And the tree toad is a chef d'oeuvre for the highest. And the running blackberry would adorn the parlors of heaven. And the narrowest hinge in my hand put to scorn all machinery. And the cow crunching with depressed head surpasses any statue. And a mouse is miracle enough to stagger sextillions of infidels. I find I incorporate nice coal, long-threaded moss, fruits, grains, esculent roots, and I'm stuccoed with quadrupeds and birds all over, and have distanced what is behind me for good reasons, but call anything back again when I desire it. In vain the speeding or shyness, in vain the plutonic rocks send their old heat against my approach. In vain the mastodon retreats beneath its own powdered bones. In vain objects stand leagues off and assume manifold shapes. In vain the ocean setting in hollows and the great monsters lying low. In vain the buzzard houses herself with the sky. In vain the snake slides through the creepers and logs. In vain the elk takes to the inner passes of the woods. In vain the razor-billed auk sails far north to Labrador. I follow quickly. I ascend to the nest in the fissure of the cliff. I think I could turn and live with animals. They're so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them long and long. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. They do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. Not one kneels to another nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago. Not one is respectable or unhappy over the whole earth. So they show their relations to me and I accept them. They bring me tokens of myself. They evince them plainly in their possession. I wonder where they get those tokens. Did I pass that way huge times ago and negligently drop them? Myself moving forward then and now and forever, gathering and showing more always, and with velocity infinite and omnigenous, and the like of these among them, not too exclusive toward the readers of my remembrancers, picking out here one that I love, and now go with him on brotherly terms, a gigantic beauty of a stallion, fresh and responsive to my caresses, head high in the forehead, wide between the ears, limbs glossy and supple, tail dusting the ground, eyes full of sparkling wickedness, ears finely cut, flexibly moving. His nostrils dilate as my heels embrace him. His well-built limbs tremble with pleasure as we race around and return. I but use you a minute, then I resign you, stallion. Why do I need your paces when I myself outgallop them? even as I stand or sit passing faster than you. Space and time. Now I see that it is true, what I guessed at, what I guessed when I loafed on the grass, what I guessed while I lay alone in my bed. And again, as I walk the beach, 
under the paling stars of the morning. My ties and ballasts leave me, my elbows rest in sea gaps, I skirt sierras, my palms cover continents, I am afoot with my vision. By the city's quadrilangular houses, in log huts camping with lumbermen, along the ruts of the turnpike, along the dry gulch and rivulet bed, weeding my onion patch or hoeing rows of carrots and parsnips, crossing savannas, trailing in forests, prospecting, gold digging, girdling the trees of a new purchase, scorched ankle deep by the hot sand, hauling my boat down the shallow river where the panther walks to and fro on a limb overhead, where the buck turns furiously at the hunter, where the rattlesnake suns his flabby length on a rock, where the otter is feeding on a fish, where the alligator in his tough pimples sleeps by the bayou, where the black bear is searching for roots or honey, where the beaver pats the mud with his petal-shaped tail over the growing sugar over the yellow-flowered cotton plant, over the rice in its low, moist field, over the sharp-peaked farmhouse with its scalloped scum and slender shoots from the gutters, over the western persimmon, over the long-leaved corn, over the delicate blue-flower flax, over the white and brown buckwheat, a hummer and buzzer there with the rest, over the dusky green of the rye as it ripples and shades in the breeze, scaling mountains, pulling myself cautiously up, holding on by low, scragged limbs, walking the path worn in the grass and beat through the leaves of the brush, where the quail is whistling betwixt the woods and the wheat lot, where the bat flies in the seventh month eve, where the great gold bug drops through the dark, where the brook puts out of the roots of the old tree and flows to the meadow, where cattle stand and shake away flies with the tremulous shuddering of their hides, where the cheesecloth hangs in the kitchen, where andirons straddle the hearth slab, where cobwebs fall in festoons from the rafters, where trip hammers crash, where the press is whirling its cylinders, where the human heart beats with terrible throes under its ribs where the pear-shaped balloon is floating aloft, floating in it myself and looking composedly down, where the life car is drawn on the slip noose, where the heat hatches pale green eggs in the dented sand, where the she-whale swims with her calf and never forsakes it, where the steamship trails hindways its long pennant of smoke, where the fin of the shark cuts like a black chip out of the water, where the half-burned brig is riding on unknown currents, where shells grow to her slimy deck, where the dead are corrupting below, where the dense starred flag is borne at the head of the regiments, approaching Manhattan up by the long-stretching island, under Niagara, the cataract falling like a veil over my countenance, upon a doorstep, upon the horse block of hard wood outside, upon the race course, or enjoying picnics, or jigs, or a good game of baseball, at he festivals with blaggard gibes, ironical license, bull dances, drinking, laughter, at the cider mill tasting the sweets of the brown mash, sucking the juice through a straw, at apple peelings wanting kisses for all the red fruit I find, at musters, beach parties, friendly bees, huskings, house raisings, where the mockingbird sounds his delicious gurgles, cackles, screams, weeps, where the hayrick stands in the barnyard, where the dry stalks are scattered, where the brood cow waits in the hovel, where the bull advances to do his masculine work, where the stud to the mare, where the cock is treading the hen, where the heifers browse, where geese nip their food with short jerks, where sundown shadows length over the limitless and lonesome prairie, where herds of buffalo make a crawling spread of the square miles far and near, where the hummingbird shimmers, where the neck of the long-leaved swan is curving and winding, where the laughing gull scoots by the shore, where she laughs her near-human laugh, where beehives range on a gray 
bench in the garden half hid by the high weeds, where band-necked partridges roost in a ring on the ground with their heads out, where burial coaches enter the arched gates of a cemetery, where winter wolves bark amid wastes of snow and icicled trees, where the yellow-crowned heron comes to the edge of the marsh at night and feeds upon small crabs, where the splash of swimmers and divers cools the warm noon, where the Katie did works her chromatic reed on the walnut tree over the wall through patches of citrons and cucumbers with silver-wired leaves, through the salt lick or orange glade, or under conical firs, through the gymnasium, through the curtain saloon, through the office or public hall, pleased with the native and pleased with the foreign, pleased with the new and old, pleased with the homely woman as well as the handsome, pleased with the Quakeress as she puts off her bonnet and talks melodiously, pleased with the tune of the choir of the whitewashed church, pleased with the earnest words of the sweating Methodist preacher, impressed seriously at the camp meeting, looking in at the shop windows of Broadway the whole forenoon, flatting the flesh of my nose on the thick plate glass, wandering the same afternoon with my face turned up to the clouds or down a lane or along the beach, my right and left arms around the sides of two friends and I in the middle, coming home with a silent and dark-cheeked bush boy. Behind me he rides at the drape of the day, far from the settlement studying the print of animals' feet or the moccasin print, by the cot in the hospital, reaching lemonade to a feverish patient, nigh the coffin corpse where all is still, examining with a candle, voyaging to every port to dicker and adventure, hurrying with the modern crowd as eager and flickle as any, hot toward one I hate, ready in my madness to knife him, solitary at midnight in my backyard, my thoughts gone from me a long while, walking the old hills of Judea with the beautiful gentle God by my side, speeding through space, speeding through heaven and stars, speeding amid the seven satellites and the broad ring and the diameter of 80,000 miles, speeding with tailed meteors, throwing fireballs like the rest, carrying the crescent child that carries its own full mother in its belly, storming, enjoying, planning, loving, cautioning, backing and filling, appearing and disappearing, I tread day and night such roads. I visit the orchards of spheres and look at the product and look at the quintillions ripened and look at the quintillions green. I fly those flights of a fluid and swallowing soul. My course runs through the soundings of plummets. I help myself to material and immaterial. No guard can shut me off, no law prevent me. I anchor my ship for a little while only. My messengers continually cruise away or bring their returns to me. I go hunting polar furs and the seal, leaping chasms with a pike-pointed staff, clinging to topples of brittle and blue. I ascend to the foretruck. I take my place late at night in the crow's nest. We sail the Arctic Sea. It is plenty light enough. Through the clear atmosphere I stretch around on the wonderful beauty. The enormous masses of ice pass me, and I pass them. The scenery is plain in all directions. The white-topped mountains show in the distance. I fling out my fancies toward them. We are approaching some great battlefield in which we are soon to be engaged. We pass the colossal outposts of the encampment. We pass with still feet and caution. Or... We are entering by the suburbs some vast and ruined city, the blocks and fallen architecture more than all the living cities of the globe. I am a free companion. I bivouac by invading watchfires. I turn the bridegroom out of bed and stay with the bride myself. I tighten her all night to my thighs and lips. My voice is the wife's voice, the screech by the rail of the stairs. They fetch my man's body up dripping and drowned. 
I understand the large hearts of heroes, the courage of present times in all times, how the skipper saw the crowded and rudderless wreck of the steamship and death chasing it up and down the storm, how he knuckled tight and gave not back an inch and was faithful of days and faithful of nights and chalked in large letters on a board, be of good cheer, we will not desert you. How he followed with them and tacked with them three days and would not give it up. How he saved the drifting company at last. How the lank, loose-gowned women looked when boated from the side of their prepared graves. How the silent, old-faced infants and the lifted, sick, and the sharp-lipped, unshaven men. All this I swallow. It tastes good. I like it well. It becomes mine. I am the man. I suffered. I was there. The disdain and the calmness of martyrs, the mother of old condemned for a witch burnt with dry wood, her children gazing on, the hounded slave that flags in the race, leans by the fence, blowing, covered with sweat, the twinges that sting like needles his legs and neck, the murderous buckshot and the bullets. All these I feel or am. I am the hounded slave. I wince at the bite of the dogs. Hell and despair are upon me. Crack and again crack. The marksman. I clutch the rails of the fence. My gourd ribs thinned with the ooze of my skin. I fall on the weeds and stones. The riders spur their unwilling horses. Hold close. Taunt my dizzy ears and beat me violently over the head with whip stalks. Agonies are one of my changes of garments. I do not ask the wounded person how he feels. I myself become the wounded person. My hurts turn livid upon me as I lean on a cane and observe. I am the mashed fireman with breastbone broken. Tumbling walls buried me in their debris. Heat and smoke I inspired. I heard the yelling shouts of my comrades. I heard the distant click of their picks and shovels. They have cleared the beams away. They tenderly life me forth. I lie in the night air, in my red shirt, the pervading hush is for my sake. Painless, after all, I lie exhausted, but not so unhappy. White and beautiful are the faces around me. The heads are bared of their fire caps. The kneeling crowd fades with the light of torches. Distant and dead, we suscitate. They show as the dial or move as the hands of me. I am the clock myself. I am an old artillerist. I tell of my fort's bombardment. I am there again. Again the long roll of the drummers. Again the attacking cannon mortars. Again to my listening ears the cannon responsive. I take part. I see and hear the whole. The cries, curses, roar. The plaudits for well-aimed shots. The ambulanza slowly passing trailing its red drip, workmen searching after damages, making indispensable repairs, the fall of grenades through the rent roof, the fan-shaped explosion, the whiz of limbs, heads, stone, wood, iron, high in the air. Again gurgles the mouth of my dying general. He furiously waves his hand. He gasps through the clot, Mind not me, mind the entrenchments. Now I tell what I knew in Texas in my early youth. I tell not the fall of Alamo, not one escaped to tell the fall of Alamo. The hundred and fifty are dumb yet at Alamo. Tis the tale of the murder and cold blood of four hundred and twelve young men. Retreating they had formed in a hollow square with their baggage for breastworks, nine hundred lives out of the surrounding enemies. Nine times their number was the price they took in advance. Their colonel was wounded and their ammunition gone. They treated for an honorable capitulation, received writing and seal, gave up their arms and marched back prisoners of war. They were the glory of the race of rangers, matchless with horse, rifle, song, supper, courtship, large, turbulent, generous, handsome, proud, and affectionate, bearded, sunburned, dressed in the free costume of hunters, not a single one over thirty years of age. The second first day morning they were brought in squads, 
and massacred. It was beautiful early summer. The work commenced about five o'clock and was over by eight. None obeyed the command to kneel. Some made a mad and helpless rush. Some stood stark and straight. A few fell at once, shot in the temple or heart. The living and dead lay together, the maimed and mangled dug in the dirt. The newcomers saw them there. Some, half killed, attempted to crawl away. These were dispatched with bayonets or battered with the blunts of muskets. A youth not seventeen years old seized his assassin till two more came to release him. The three were all torn and covered with the boy's blood. At eleven o'clock began the burning of the bodies. That is the tale of the murder of four hundred and twelve young men. Would you hear of an old-time sea fight? Would you learn who won by the light of the moon and stars? List to the yarn, as my grandmother's grandfather sailor told it to me. Our foe was no skulk in his ship, I tell you, said he. His was the surly English pluck, and there is no tougher or truer, and never was and never will be. Along the lowered eve he came, horribly raking us. We closed with him, the yards entangled, the cannon touched, my captain lashed fast with his own hands. We had received some eighteen-pound shots under the water. On our lower gun deck two large pieces had burst at the first fire, killing all around and blowing up overhead. Fighting at sundown, fighting at dark, Ten o'clock at night, the full moon well up. Our leaks on the gain, and five feet of water reported. The master at arms loosing, the prisoners confined in the afterhold, to give them a chance for themselves. The transit to and from the magazine is now stopped by the sentinels. They see so many strange faces, they do not know whom to trust. Our frigate takes fire. The others ask if we demand quarter. If our colors are struck, and the fighting done. Now I laugh content, for I hear the voice of my little captain. We have not struck, he composedly cries. We have just begun our part of the fighting. Only three guns are in use. One is directed by the captain himself against the enemy's main mast. Two, well served with grape and canister, silence his musketry and clear his decks. The tops alone second the fire of this little battery, especially the main top. They hold out bravely during the whole of the action. Not a moment's cease. The leaks gain fast on the pumps. The fire eats toward the powder magazine. One of the pumps has been shot away. It is generally thought we are sinking. Serene stands the little captain. He is not hurried. His voice is neither high nor low. His eyes give more light to us than our battle lanterns. Toward twelve, there in the beams of the moon, they surrender to us. Stretched and still lies the midnight. Two great hulls, motionless, on the breast of the darkness. Our vessel riddled and slowly sinking, preparations to pass to the one we have conquered. The captain on the quarter deck, coldly giving his orders, through a countenance white as a sheet. Near by the corpse of the child that served in the cabin, the dead face of an old salt, with long white hair, and carefully curled whiskers. The flames, spite of all that can be done, flickering aloft and below. The husky voices of the two or three officers yet fit for duty. Formless stacks of bodies and bodies by themselves. Dabs of flesh upon the masts and spars. Cut of cordage, dangle of rigging. Slight shock of the soothe of waves. Black and impassive guns. Litter of powder parcels. Strong scent, a few large stars overhead, silent and mournful shining. Delicate sniffs of sea breeze, smells of sedgy grass and fields by the shore. Death messages given in charge to survivors. The hiss of the surgeon's knife, the gnawing teeth of his saw. Whiz, cluck, swash of falling blood. Short wild scream and long dull tapering groan. These so, these irretrievable. You laggards there on guard, look to your arms. In at the conquered doors they crowd, 
I am possessed, embody all presences, outlawed or suffering, see myself in prison, shaped like another man, and feel the dull, unintermitted pain. For me, the keepers of convicts shoulder their carbines and keep watch. It is I let out in the morning and barred at night. Not a mutineer walks handcuffed to jail, but I am handcuffed to him and walk by his side. I am less the jolly one there and more the silent one with sweat on my twitching lips. Not a youngster is taken for larceny, but I go up too and am tried and sentenced. Not a cholera patient lies at the last gasp, but I also lie at the last gasp. My face is ash-colored. My sinews gnarl. Away from me, people retreat. Askers embody themselves in me, and I am embodied in them. I project my hat, sit shamefaced, and beg. Enough, enough, enough. Somehow I have been stunned. Stand back. Give me a little time beyond my cuffed head. Slumbers, dreams, gaping. I discover myself on the verse of a usual mistake. That I could forget the mockers and insults. That I could forget the trickling tears and the blows of the bludgeons and hammers. That I could look with a separate look on my own crucifixion and bloody crowning. I remember now. I resume the overstate fraction. The grave of rock multiplies what has been confided to it, or to any graves. Corpses rise, gashes heal, fastenings roll from me. I troop forth replenished with supreme power, one of an average unending procession. Inland and seacoast we go and pass all boundary lines, our swift ordinances on their way over to the whole earth the blossoms we wear in our hats, the growth of thousands of years. Elives, I salute you. Come forward. Continue your annotations. Continue your questionings. The friendly and flowing savage, who is he? Is he waiting for civilization or past it and mastering it? Is he some southwesterner raised outdoors? Is he Canadian? Is he from Mississippi country, Iowa, Oregon, California, the mountains, prairie life, bush life, or sailor from the sea? Wherever he goes, men and women accept and desire him. They desire he should like them, touch them, speak to them, stay with them. Behavior lawless as snowflakes, words simple as grass, uncombed head, laughed and naivety. Slow stepping feet, common features, common modes and emanations. They descend in new forms from the tips of his fingers. They are wafted with the odor of his body or breath. They fly out of the glances of his eyes. Flaunt of the sunshine, I need not your basque. Lie over, you light surfaces only. I force surfaces and depths also, earth. You seem to look for something at my hands. Say, old top knot, what do you want? Man or woman, I might tell how I like you, but cannot. And might tell what it is in me and what it is in you, but cannot. And might tell that pining I have, that pulse of my nights and days. Behold, I do not give lectures or little charity. When I give, I give myself. You, there, impotent. Loosen the knees, open your scarf chops till I blow grit within you. Spread your palms and life the flaps of your pockets. I am not to be denied. I compel. I have stores plenty and to spare, and anything I have, I bestow. I do not ask who you are. That is not important to me. You can do nothing and be nothing but what I will enfold you. To cotton field drudge or cleaner of privies, I lean. On his right cheek, I put the family kiss. And in my soul, I swear, I never will deny him. On women fit for conception, I start bigger and nimbler babes. This day, I am jetting the stuff of far more arrogant republics. To anyone dying, thither I speed and twist the knob of the door, turn the bedclothes toward the foot of the bed, let the physician and the priest go home. I seize the descending man and raise him with resistless will. O oh, despairer, here is my neck. By God, you shall not go down. Hang your whole weight upon me. I dilate you with tremendous breath. I buoy you up. 
every room of the house do I fill with an armed force, lovers of me, bafflers of graves, sleep, and I and they keep guard all night. Not doubt, not disease shall dare to lay finger upon you. I have embraced you, and henceforth possess you to myself. And when you rise in the morning, you will find what I tell you is so. I am he bringing help for the sick as they pant on their backs, and for the strong upright men I bring yet more needed help. I heard what was said of the universe, heard it and heard of it several thousand years. It is middling well as far as it goes, but is that all? magnifying and applying come I, outbidding at the start the old cautious hucksters, taking myself the exact dimensions of Jehovah, lithographing Kronos, Zeus his son, Hercules his grandson, buying drafts of Osiris, Isis, Belu, Brahma, Buddha, in my portfolio placing manna to loose, Allah on a leaf, the crucifix engraved, with Odin and the hideous face Mexicli, and every idol and image, taking them all for what they are worth and not a cent more, admitting they were alive and did the work of their days. They bore mites as for unfledged birds who have now to rise and fly and sing for themselves, accepting the rough deific sketches to fill out better in myself, bestowing them freely on each man and woman I see, discovering as much or more in a framer framing a house, putting higher claims for him there with his rolled-up sleeves, driving the mallet and chisel, not objecting to special revelations, considering a curl of smoke or a hair on the back of my hand, just as curious as any revelation. Lads a hold of fire engines and hook and ladder ropes no less to me than the gods of the antique wars. Minding their voices peal through the crash of destruction, their brawny limbs passing safe over charred lathes, their white foreheads whole and unhurt out of the flames, by the mechanic's wife with her babe at her nipple, interceding for every person born, three scythes at harvest whizzing in a row from three lusty angels with shirts bagged out at their waists. The snag-toothed hostler with the red hair, redeeming sins past and to come, selling all he possesses, traveling on foot to fee lawyers for his brother and sit by him while he is tried for forgery. What was strewn in the amplest, strewing the square rod about me, and not filling the square rod then. The bull and the bug never worshipped half enough. Dung and dirt more admirable than was dreamed. The supernatural of no account. Myself, waiting my time to be one of the Supremes, the day getting ready for me when I shall do as much good as the best and be as prodigious. By my life lumps, becoming already a creator, putting myself here and now to the ambushed womb of the shadows. A call in the midst of the crowd, my own voice, oraton sweeping and final. Come, my children, come, my boys and girls, my women, household and intimates. Now the performer launches his nerve. He has passed his prelude on the reeds within. Easily written, loose-fingered chords, I feel the thrum of your climax and close. My head slews round on my neck. Music rolls, but not from the organ. Folks are around me, but they are no household of mine. Ever the hard, unsunk ground, ever the eaters and drinkers, ever the upward and downward sun, ever the air and the ceaseless tides, ever myself and my neighbors refreshing, wicked, real, ever the old, inexplicable query, ever that thorn thumb, that breath of itches and thirsts, ever the vexers hoot hoot, till we find where the sly one hides and bring him forth, ever love. Ever the sobbing liquid of life, ever the bandage under the chin, ever the trestles of death, here and there with dimes on the eyes walking, to feed the greed of the belly, the brains liberally spooning, tickets buying, taking, selling, but into the feast never once going, many sweating, plowing, thrashing, 
and then the chaff for payment receiving. A few idly owning, and they, the wheat, continually claiming. This is the city, and I am one of the citizens. Whatever interests the rest, interests me. Politics, wars, markets, newspapers, schools, the mayor and councils, banks, tariffs, steamships, factories, stocks, stores, real estate, and personal estate. The little plentiful mannequins, skipping around in collars and tailed coats. I am aware who they are. They are positively not worms or fleas. I acknowledge the duplicates of myself. The weakest and the shallowest is deathless with me. What I do and say, the same waits for them. Every thought that flounders in me, the same flounders in them. I know perfectly well my own egotism, know my omnivorous lines, and must not write any less, and would fetch you, whoever you are, flush with myself. Not words of routine, this song of mine, but abruptly to question, to leap beyond, yet nearer bring this printed and bound book. But the printer and the printing office boy. The well-taken photographs, but your wife or friend, close and solid in your arms. The black ship mailed with iron, her muddy guns in her turrets. But the pluck of the captain and engineers. In the houses, the dishes and fare and furniture. But the host and hostess and the look out of their eyes. The sky up there, yet here or next door or across the way, the saints and sages in history, but you, yourself, sermons, creeds, theology, but the fathomless human brain, and, and what is reason, and what is love, and what is life? I do not despise you, priests, all time, the world over. My faith is the greatest of faiths and the least of faiths, enclosing worship ancient and modern and all between ancient and modern, believing I shall come again upon the earth after five thousand years, waiting responses from oracles, honoring the gods, saluting the sun, making a fetish of the first rock or stump, powwowing with sticks in the circle of obis, helping the lama or brahmin as he trims the lamps of the idols, dancing yet through the streets in a phallic procession, wrapped and austere in the woods, is a gym sophist, drinking mead from the skullcap to shastas and vidas, admirant, minding the Quran, walking the teokalis, spotted with gore from the stone and knife, beating the serpent-skinned drum. Accepting the Gospels, accepting him that was crucified, knowing assuredly that he is divine. To the mass kneeling or the Puritan's prayer rising, or sitting patiently in a pew, ranting and frothing in my insane crisis, or waiting dead-like till my spirit arouses me, looking forth on pavement and land, or outside of pavement and land, belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits, one of the centripetal and centrifugal gang, I turn and talk, like a man leaving charges before a journey. Downhearted doubters, dull and excluded, frivolous, sullen, moping, angry, affected, disheartened, atheistical. I know every one of you. I know the sea of torment, doubt, despair, and unbelief how the flukes splash, how they contorted rapid as lightning with spasms and spouts of blood. Be at peace, bloody flukes of doubters and sullen mopers. I take my place among you as much as among any. The past is the push of you, me, all precisely the same. And what is yet untried and afterward is for you, me, all precisely the same. I do not know what is untried and afterward, but I know it will, in its turn, prove sufficient and cannot fail. Each who passes is considered. Each who stops is considered. Not a single one can it fail. It cannot fail the young man who died and was buried, nor the young woman who died and was put by his side, nor the little child that peeped in at the door and then drew back and was never seen again nor the old man who has lived without purpose and feels it with a bitterness worse than gall, nor him in the poorhouse tubercled by rum and the bad 
disorder. Nor the numberless slaughtered and wrecked, nor the brutish Kobo, called the order of humanity, nor the sacks merely floating with open mouths for food to slip in, nor anything in the earth or down in the oldest graves of the earth, nor anything the myriads of spheres, nor the myriads of myriads that inhabit them, nor the present, nor the least wisp that is known. It is time to explain myself. Let us stand up. What is known I strip away. I launch all men and women forward with me into the unknown. The clock indicates the moment, but what does eternity indicate? We have thus far exhausted trillions of winters and summers. There are trillions ahead and trillions ahead of them. Births have brought us richness and variety, and other births will bring us richness and variety. I do not call one greater and one smaller. That which fills its period and place is equal to any. Were mankind murderous or jealous upon you, my brother, my sister? I am sorry for you. They are not murderous or jealous upon me. All has been gentle with me. I keep no account with lamentation. What have I to do with lamentation? I am an acme of things accomplished. I am an encloser of things to be. My feet strike an apex of the apices of the stairs. On every step, bunches of ages and larger bunches between the steps. All below duly traveled and still I mount and mount. Rise after rise, bow the phantoms behind me. Afar down I see the huge first nothing. I know I was even there. I waited, unseen and always, and slept through the lethargic mist, and took my time, and took no hurt from the fetid carbon. Long I was hugged close, long and long, Immense have been the preparations for me, faithful and friendly the arms that have helped me. Cycles ferried my cradle, rowing and rowing like cheerful boatmen. For room to me stars kept aside in their own rings. They sent influences to look after what was to hold me. Before I was born out of my mother, generations guided me. My embryo has never been torpid. Nothing could overlay it. For it, the nebula, cohered to an orb. The long, slow strata piled to rest it on. Vast vegetables gave it sustenance. Monstrous sauroids transported it in their mouths and deposited it with care. All forces have been steadily employed to complete and delight me. Now, on this spot, I stand with my robust soul. O span of youth, ever pushed elasticity, O manhood balanced, floored and full, my lovers suffocate me, crowding my lips, thicken the pores of my skin, jostling me through streets and public halls, coming naked to me at night, crying by day, ahoy, from the rocks of the river, swinging and chirping over my head, calling my name from flower beds, vines, tangled underbrush, lighting on every moment of my life, bussing my body with soft balsamic buses, noiselessly passing handfuls out of their hearts and giving them to be mine. Old age superbly rising, oh welcome, ineffable grace of dying days, Every condition promulges not only itself, it promulges what grows after and out of itself, and the dark hush promulges as much as any. I open my scuttle at night and see the far-sprinkled systems, and all I see multiplied as high as I can, cipher age but the rim of the farther systems. Wider and wider they spread, expanding, always expanding, outward and outward and forever outward. My son has his son, and round him obediently wheels. He joins with his partners a group of superior circuit, and greater sets follow, making specks of the greatest inside them. There is no stoppage, and never can be stoppage, if I, you, 
and the worlds, and all beneath or upon their surfaces, were this moment reduced back to a pallid float, it would not avail in the long run. We should surely bring up again where we now stand, and surely go as much farther, and then farther and farther. A few quadrillions of eras, a few octillions of cubic leagues do not hazard the span or make it impertinent. They are but parts. Anything is but a part. See ever so far. There is limitless space outside of that. Count ever so much. There is limitless time around that. My rendezvous is appointed. It is certain the Lord will be there and wait till I come on perfect terms. The great camarado, the lover true for whom I pine, will be there. I know I have the best of time and space and was never measured and never will be measured. I tramp a perpetual journey. Come, listen all. My signs are a rainproof coat, good shoes, and a staff cut from the woods. No friend of mine takes his ease in my chair. I have no chair, no church, no philosophy. I lead no man to a dinner table, library exchange, but each man and each woman of you I lead upon a knoll. My left hand hooking you round the waist, my right hand pointing to landscapes of continents and the public road... Not I. Not anyone else can travel that road for you. You must travel it for yourself. It is not far. It is within reach. Perhaps you've been on it since you were born and did not know. Perhaps it is everywhere on water and on land. Shoulder your duds, dear son, and I will mine. And let us hasten forth. Wonderful cities and free nations we shall fetch as we go. If you tire, give me both burdens and rest the chuff of your hand on my hip. And in due time, you shall repay the same service to me. For after we start, we never lie by again. This day before dawn, I ascended a hill and looked at the crowded heaven. And I said to my spirit, when we become the enfolders of those orbs and the pleasure and knowledge of everything in them, shall we be filled and satisfied then? And my spirit said, no. We but level that lift to pass and continue beyond. You are also asking me questions, and I hear you. I answer that I cannot answer. You must find out for yourself. Sit a while, dear son. Here are biscuits to eat, and here is milk to drink. But as soon as you sleep and renew yourself in sweet clothes, I kiss you with a goodbye kiss and open the gate for your egress hence. Long enough you have dreamed contemptible dreams. Now I wash the gum from your eyes. You must habit yourself to the dazzle of the light and of every moment of your life. Long have you timidly waited, holding a plank by the shore. Now I will you to be a bold swimmer, to jump off in the midst of the sea, rise again, nod to me, shout and laughingly dash with your hair. I am the teacher of athletes. He that by me spreads a wider breast than my own proves the width of my own. He most honors my style, who learns under it to destroy the teacher. The boy I love, the same becomes a man, not through derived power, but in his own right, wicked rather than virtuous out of conformity or fear. Fond of his sweetheart, relishing well his stake, unrequited love or a slight cutting him worse than sharp steel cuts. First rate to ride, to fight, to hit the bullseye, to sail a skiff, to sing a song or play on the banjo, preferring scars and the beard and faces pitted with smallpox over all latherers, and those well tanned to those that keep out of the sun. I teach, straying from me, yet who can stray from me? I follow you, whoever you are, from the present hour. My words itch at your ears till you understand them. I do not say these things for a dollar or to fill up the time while I wait for a boat. It is you talking just as much as myself. I act as the tongue of you. And in your mouth, in mine, it begins to be loosened. 
I swear. I will never again mention love or death inside a house, and I swear I will never translate myself at all only to him or her who privately stays with me in the open air. If you would understand me, go to the heights or water shore. The nearest gnat is an explanation and a drop or motion of waves a key. The mole, the oar, the handsaw. Second my words. No shuttered room or school can commune with me, but roughs and little children better than they. The young mechanic is closest to me. He knows me well. The woodsman that takes his axe and jug with him shall take me with him all day. The farm boy plowing in the field feels good at the sound of my voice. In vessels that sail my words sail, I go with fishermen and seamen and love them. The soldier camped up or upon the march is mine. On the night, ere the pending battle, many seek me, and I do not fail them. On that solemn night, it may be their last. Those that know me seek me. My face rubs to the hunter's face when he lies down alone in his blanket. The driver, thinking of me, does not mind the jolt of his wagon. The young mother and old mother, comprehend me. The girl and the wife rest the needle a moment and forget where they are. They and all would resume what I have told them. I have said that the soul is not more than the body. I have said that the body is not more than the soul. And nothing, not God, is greater to one than oneself is. And whoever walks a furlong without sympathy walks to his own funeral dressed in his shroud. And I, or you, pocketless of a dime, may purchase the pick of the earth, and to glance with an eye or show a bean in its pod confounds the learning of all times. And there is no trade or employment. But the young man following it may become a hero. And there's no object so soft but it makes a hub for the wheeled universe. And I say to any man or woman, let your soul stand cool and composed before a million universes. And I say to mankind, be not curious about God, for I, who am curious about each, am not curious about God. No array of terms can say how much I am at peace about God and about death. I hear and behold God in every object, yet understand God not in the least, nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? I see something of God each hour of the twenty-four, and each moment then, in the faces of men and women, I see God and in my own face in the glass. I find letters from God dropped in the street, and every one is signed by God's name. And I leave them where they are, for I know that wheresoever I go, others will punctually come, forever and ever. And as to you, death, and your bitter hug of mortality, it is idle to try to alarm me. To his work without flinching, the archangel comes, I see the elder hand, pressing, receiving, supporting. I recline by the sills of the exquisite flexible doors and mark the outlet and mark the relief and escape. And to you, corpse, I think you are good manure, but that does not offend me. I smell the white roses sweet scented and growing. I reach to the leafy lips. I reach to the polished breasts of melons. And as to you, life, I reckon you are the leavings of many deaths. No doubt I have died myself 10,000 times before. I hear you whispering there, O oh stars of heaven, O oh suns, O oh grass of graves, O oh perpetual transfers and promotions. If you do not say anything, how can I say anything? Of the turbid pool that lies in the autumn forest, of the moon that descends the steeps of the sowing twilight, toss, sparkles of day and dusk, 
Toss on the black stems that decay in the muck. Toss to the moaning gibberish of the dry limbs. I ascend from the moon. I ascend from the night. I perceive that the ghastly glimmer is noonday sunbeams reflected and debouch to the steady and central from the offspring, great or small. There is that in me. I do not know what it is, but I know it is in me, wrenched and sweaty, calm and cool. Then my body becomes, I sleep. I sleep long. I do not know it. It is without name. It is a word unsaid. It is not any dictionary utterance symbol. Something it swings on more than the earth I swing on. To it the creation is the friend whose embracing awakes me. Perhaps I might tell more outlines. I, I plead for my brothers and sisters. Do you see, oh my brothers and sisters, it is not chaos or death. It is form, union, plan. It is eternal life. It is happiness, the past and present wilt. I have filled them, emptied them, and proceed to fill my next fold of the future. Listener up there, what have you to confide to me? Look in my face while I snuff the sidle of evening. Talk honestly. No one else hears you, and I stay only a minute longer. Do I contradict myself? Very well, then. I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. I concentrate toward them that are nigh. I wait on the door slab. Who has done his day's work? Who will soonest be through with his supper? Who wishes to walk with me? Will you speak before I am gone? Will you prove already too late? The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I, too, am not a bit tamed. I, too, am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yawp over the roofs of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest, and true as any on the shadowed wilds, it coaxes me to the vapor and the dusk. I depart as air. I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I effuse my flesh in eddies and drift it in lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere, waiting for you.